I'm the, the marketing snoozer. And uh, for those of you that know me, and there are a few faces in the room, um, it's a bit of a challenge this one minute thing for me, because I can talk for England when I start talking about marketing stuff, because I love it. But what I'm going to do is share with you five and a half things that I think uh, you could do in your business this year that would help you to, to grow your, your business, um, based on uh, some of the businesses I've been working with over the last couple of years. And, um, you know, my view, it's much more difficult to do, be in business at the moment and market your business. You know, when I first set up my own business 14 years ago and I left the big corporate world of BT and cable and wireless and marketing there, it was much easier for actually people to set up a business. You, you know, you opened up your office, you set up your, your shop, you, you uh, put your entry in yellow pages, and if you're really flash, you put your one-page advert in the local paper. And, and to, to be fair, it wasn't that difficult to get customers. And certainly over the last few years, um, most of the people I'm working with have found it so much more difficult because there's so much stuff and noise going on. It's all the digital channels, the telly, there's websites everywhere going mad, there's, you know, social media, and, you know, people are just absolutely bombarded with messages. And <coughs> it's very, very difficult for us to make ourselves heard and stand out, even with our current customers. I think it's a much more complex environment for people. And um, it's certainly underlined by a recent Guardian survey at the back end of last year, and I, and I completely believe this, really. Some people are getting as many as 3,500 marketing messages a day. So no wonder it's a bit more challenging for us. And so hopefully some of the pointers here today will help you think about how you can really make your voice heard and stand out a, a bit more. So um, here's my first one. And this is a bit of a case of stating the obvious, guys. But, but I, I put it up here nevertheless, which is uh, really understand and target your customers. And I'll, and I'll use some examples to illustrate it. Um, the more you're clear about who the right customers are for your business, the much more easier it is, therefore, to target them. And, and it's quite interesting because a lot of businesses, and, and, I'm, and Martin mentioned this earlier, quite a lot of businesses, you know, you have a good idea of who your customers are when you first set out a business, but we don't often always go back and, and revisit who are the right customers for us and the right customers to do doing business with. And there's, there's a lot of reasons why you would do that exercise. So, for example, here's a, here's a picture of an event that my partner and I ran three years ago in Oxford at the Castam Stadium um, for, for business owners in Oxfordshire. And what we wanted is a sort of a, yeah, quite a large number of switched on business owners in the room. And the consequence of being really, really clear who it was we wanted there, it wasn't too difficult to actually get 120 people at the right business, businesses in the room. Um, second example I can think of is a firm of management accountants I've been working with. They, they actually took a very positive uh, review of their customer base last back end of last year and had a look at who are the right customers are for them and their business. And as a result, they've actually managed some of their customers away from their business, or the previous clients away from their business. They have a lot less customers now, but as a result, their income and profitability has gone through the roof, as a result of them actually being really clear who the right customers are for their business. And, and that's why you actually put the effort in to really think about who are the right customers or groups of customers for you, because it can really be a much more positive um, customer experience if you've got the right people working with you. Here's another quick example of a um, uh, direct mail campaign that we ran last year, again, just to, to illustrate this. We, we wanted to get particular business owners into come to come to meetings that we were running. So I know it's a bit creepy, but we went and researched them on the internet, and we stalked them on LinkedIn, and scraped their pictures off their LinkedIn profile, and then put them into a wanted poster, and, and mailed those in a poster tube to the people who wanted to invite to those meetings. Now, you know, it might have been a bit creepy, but nevertheless, if you've got a poster with your name on it and your picture on it inviting you to a meeting, you'd certainly be interested. And from our perspective, it, it was very, very successful. I mean, it, it really did the job. So the whole point is, the more clear you are on who the right customers are for you, the more targeted you can be, and you can certainly save yourself quite a lot of time and effort uh, if you're doing that. Um, the second one is, is your database. I mean, I, I love my database. Seriously, if my office burnt down tomorrow, that would be the thing I would say, because actually, that would be the thing that would get me back up and running again pretty quickly and, and earning an income in my business. And so many of the businesses that I talk to are not really <coughs> the sort of double attention to their databases I think they, they could be, you know. And, and again, if this is prompting any thoughts, you know, maybe it's, it's worthy of spending a bit of time and attention on your database, because if you're not 
really actively collecting people's names and addresses off your, off your website if it's not automated, or if you're running events and you're getting people's details but not necessarily getting onto the database quickly and communicating with them soon, and that's a really worthy thing to think about. And certainly, we should all really be aware of the fact that most businesses only ever follow up on leads once. You know, but, but most people don't buy until six or eight contacts. And I know most of us know that, but how many people have really put structures in place to, to, to actively to, to make sure that that happens? I mean, certainly I know some instances of clients that have come two years down the line. So do make sure you, you stay in contact with people regularly. And also with your current customers, because they need to hear from you. Also, we talked earlier about how much noise is going out there. They need to know you're still there and you're, you're keeping your share of their mind. So please, if this prompts anything, go home and, and show your database a bit of love and care and nurturing. Third one is differentiation. And this, again, is very, very closely aligned to what Martin was saying earlier. You know, the more you can differentiate your business and stand out and stand for something, um, the better. I mean, this is one of the ways that you can differentiate yourself. I, 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 I published a book. Well, actually, to be fair, I, I wrote the forward. But nevertheless, you know, it helps me stand out as an authority in my own. What is it that you can do in your business that just differentiates you and makes you stand out from your competitors? Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting area and worthy of thought. I um, regularly review people's websites for their businesses to make sure that they're doing the right things for them. And um, there was one fabulous physiotherapy practice I was working with last year. Lovely business, loved by clients, fabulous um, returns and referrals. But when I had a look at their website, it was quite extraordinary on their competitors' websites. They shared six of the same eye stock photos. So they all looked exactly the same. So you couldn't tell what, what was different about. It. So again, constantly, consequently, they've done a fabulous new website, very, very different, very differentiated, worth doing. Fourthly, again, can't go on about this enough, please help people to find you. Again, we've got to stand out more. Uh, I worked, I talked to a very significant manufacturing business a couple of uh, weeks ago. The only two ways that people could come and find them and become clients of their website and Google AdWords click click. That's it, nothing else. You know, they're very vulnerable in my view. And it's like retail businesses that rely very heavily on footfall. Second British gas digs up outside for three months, business tanks. And so, you know, if you're if you recognise that you don't have at least ten to twelve different ways for people to come and find you, please spend some time putting those things in place so you're not vulnerable, you're not scrabbling around trying to get business from new prospects. Uh, when it starts to go a bit quiet. So please, please put some things in place. I've got a list if anybody wants that. I'll happily send, the, send that to you um, of things you could look at. Fifth, build relationships. They're so important. Um, again, um, you know, people like to do business with the people that, that they're friends with. You know, so the more you can find out about your clients, what makes them tick, what their issues are, what <coughs> their problems, genuinely understand them, get on page with them, then it's going to make your, your business so much more successful as a result. And the half, again, just underlines all of it. Please think, you know, really think about how to make the whole process of buying from you and doing business with you easier. Because the more thinking you do up front before you actually execute your marketing, the better relationships you will be building. And here's my summary, three points to take away. So we've covered this already, but please really understand the customers and target them because the more targeting you do, less blank of honor you do, the less money you're going to waste, the less time and effort you're going to waste. Do more to help people find you, put more structures in place if there are only a few things that, that people can come find you, and please really, really think about how you can improve the experience of doing business with you and think about your marketing. Thank you, and uh, we're just buzzing now, so we're just on time. Um, and I'm going to hand you over um, to Nick, who's going to talk to you about the art of sales. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Cheers.